Today, yeah, I'd like to add my own condolences and best wishes uh, to the family and friends of Freddie Hill, a footballer who spent three seasons at City in the early 70s, who sadly passed away on the 1st of October 2021. So today, by a way of a small tribute, I take a look at his time at City and a, a rewarding and long football career in general, with well over 500 appearances uh, in total, so we'll have a quick look at uh, other places he went, as well as our wonderful city, of course. Freddie, or just Fred Hill, was born Frederick, as, as Frederick Hill, on the 17th of January, 1940. Over the old Pennines in Sheffield, he started his footballing career, though, at uh, Burnham Park, yeah, after just uh, three seasons in the Football League. Hill was selected in England under 23s when he scored six times in ten appearances. Not, not a bad, uh, not, not, not a bad score at all. Uh, despite strong interest from his local club, as you'd expect, uh, Sheffield Wednesday, the Yorkshireman signed for Bolton Wanderers in 1957 and made his Division One debut the following year, a 1-1 draw against uh, Newcastle United in October 1962. Yeah, he won his first of two caps. Yeah, his first full cap for England in a 3-1 win in Belfast over Northern Ireland. And the following month, he played again at Wembley, uh, uh, beating Wales 4-0. Uh, this was to be Hill's second and sadly final appearance for his country. When he was uh, interviewed about this, he cited the reason for this being the arrival of a certain Alf Ramsey, of course, who didn't want players to dribble. And that was one of uh, Freddie's skills, obviously, beating players, dribbling past players. And Alf Ramsey didn't want that style of football. He wanted the sort of, uh, we wanted the players to pass and go, if you like. So, uh, uh, as a dribbler, poor Fred uh, was sort of not Ramsey's way of football and that sort of ended his career for England uh, at that point in time. None other than the legend, of course, Bill Shankly. We all know Bill Shankly wanted Freddie for the Liverpool front line in 1964 and he was willing to make that transition and come up back over to Lancashire from, from Yorkshire. But he actually failed a medical on the day because of uh, apparently some high blood pressure. Uh, but this, a prob this problem appeared to, to sort of disappear the next day. He had another test, which was fine. But by then, it was just far too late. The, the deadline had, had been passed and he couldn't actually sign for Liverpool. So uh, a loss for Liverpool became or remained Bolton's gain, if you like. He was, he'd been top scorer for Bolton in 1961-62 season. Uh, and to this day, that remained, he remains the last English player to play for Bolton to score a top flight hat-trick. So they've never had an English player since to do that, which is uh, quite, quite a good record to hold. He scored that hat-trick against Sheffield United, ironically. Obviously, another Sheffield club in 1963. And to show his standing, I mean, just to show how well thought of he was at uh, Burnham Park with the Bolton faithful, his, his nickname was God. <laughs> so that's not too bad, is it? Uh, as recently as, as in 2005, so 16 years ago as I'm recording this, which is fairly recent, is, let's be honest about it, the Bolton Wanderers fans themselves voted for their top 50 players of all time. Uh, not that they've had great time since then, of course, for anyone to oust uh, Freddie, perhaps, but uh, he finished 11th. He finished 11th in that poll, so really good. I think he made around 412 appearances and scored 79 goals. Not a bad return for, for a guy who's made, perhaps mainly classed as an inside forward or a winger rather than a centre forward, if you like. He never, he never played centre forward that I can see, certainly for City anyway. Uh, 12 years with Bolton. In 1969, yeah, he actually joined third division Halifax. Yeah, a bit of a bit of a drop down from the first division before, of course, getting the great opportunities. And this is where obviously his, st his city story began. Wanted it to join Mercer and Allison City. We were the current, of course, League Cup and European Cup winners, called cup holders at that time uh, when he joined City. Uh, one journalist unkindly commentated that he was taken from football scrap heap. Uh, a bit rude on Halifax, to be honest with you, to, uh, to join City. And he cost the grand total, I think, of £12,000. And, uh, yeah, I think I think comments at the time, where he wasn't brought in particularly as a first-team player. He was brought in uh, to actually help develop City's young reserves. Some good young players were coming through the ranks. And he, he was brought in for his experience, more than the fact he was going to go straight straight into his uh, into the first team. But uh, he would see action, of course, especially in that very first season he was at City. I mean, there's a great image that you would have seen on screen there of the, as he sits proud, proudly behind the Cup Winners' Cup uh, in the, in the first-team photo for that season 
I thought, I thought that was a great, just the fact he sat behind the cup bench. Cup. And there's no doubt as soon as that photo shoot ended, he probably lifted it up, did he? I'm not too sure. I hope, it's nice to think that he did, wasn't it? Uh, that'd be a wonderful memory if, if he had done that. But so why not? It, it was sat in front of him. Perhaps he placed it down before he sat down. Who, who knows? Or he, I'm sure he got his hands on it anyway, which sadly he almost did himself uh, the following uh, this season. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But uh, yeah, it, it was great to see. That's a great image. Of course, he would play up both under Mercer and Allison as managers. Yeah, it would swap over in his in his brief time at City. And of course, Johnny Hart was there. I think in his final season as well. As I said, he was classed as an inside forward, but he came became a little bit of a utility man around the front for City at the time. Uh, he took the numbers number eight. He played number eight. He played number ten. He played number eleven. He even pulled on the number five shirt. But we'll talk about that in in a, in a second, in a few minutes. Um, such was the way he impressed, of course, pre-season Mercer and Allison. There, uh, he actually made his debut for the first team. So it was a bit of a surprise. No one expected that to happen in the very first game of the seventy seventy one season. A 1-1 draw at the Dell against Southampton. He actually played number 11 in that game. And if you think about the number 11 spot, obviously we'd had Tony Coleman a year or two before. Obviously, didn't we? But he'd left by then, obviously. Uh, and if you think about that number 11 shirt, uh, a Tony Towers played in it. Derek Jeffries, Ian Miller and Arthur Mann, all amongst others, played in that number shirt that season. So it was a role that City perhaps was struggling to fill. And that's where, obviously, Freddie got his chance. He made his main role debut on August the 22nd, uh, 1970. There's the programme there. Uh, a nil-nil thriller, uh, no doubt, uh, with Burnley in front of 36,599 fans, uh, myself included, at main role back in August 1970. Uh, he scored two league goals that season and he came against Everton at home. He seemed to like to score against Everton. He scored another one we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, a 3-0 win on April the 3rd. And United away, yeah. Uh, sadly, though, a 4-3 defeat for City. But United away on the very last season, last the very last match of the season on May the 5th that season. So uh, there you go. He did come close came so close, and this is what we're going to talk about now, to a European final. Obviously, we were defending the Cup Winners' Cup as injuries decimated City. He got, he got some games. He got some, some games in Europe. He went over to Europe in uh, round two of this in October 1970. He, he played in a 1-0 win away at Honved in round two of the Cup. And in the return leg at Main Road, he also appeared in a 2-0 win at home to Honved. Of course, on the in March, we actually played Gornick in the quarter-finals again after beating them the previous season. I mean, obviously, it went to a replay. There's some doubt as to why it went to a replay because uh, other games went to penalties. And I have seen a recent article by Gary James questioning why this happened. And some people are saying just because the refs didn't know about it. So <laughs> we had a replay in Copenhagen against Gornick and he played in that and uh, we won 3-1. So he got his chance to put us into the semi-final. Indeed, he played the first leg of the actual semi-final at, Chel at, at Stamford Bridge, European Cup Winners' Cup semi-final, on the 14th of April. Uh, sadly, obviously, as say, an injury decimated City team. We, could, we couldn't do much more than uh, sort of go, come away with a 1-0 defeat, which is OK. He didn't get to feature, sadly, in the second leg at Main Roll, where, of course, uh, we would go out. He played in the Anglo-Italian Cup for City, the, I think the only time we ever played in it, 2-2. Uh, uh, home game against a 2 2 draw at home to Blonde and put us out 3 2. We'd lost 1 0 away, but he featured in that. And he also made a brief appearance in another competition we didn't have many tilts at, and that was the Texaco Cup. Yeah, a 2 0 loss at Airdrie starred in that as well. Were you there that day? I'm fast. There you go. And obviously, it's not, not something I can remember. I can remember the home leg, I can't remember the away leg, but of course, we lost that as well. Yeah, in 71-72 season, uh, we added the mighty the mighty win, didn't we? We had to, added the mighty win Davies to the squad and uh, it actually played alongside Freddie Hill and Francis Lee, don't forget. Uh, all these three guys had turned out for, uh, for Bolton previously, obviously over the years. Uh, he joined City at a time of change, of course. Uh, there was sort of early murmurings in the board at that time. There was problems with Mercer and Allison. Uh, there was problems at board level. Uh, but uh, off, off the, off the uh, away from that, actually, everything looked okay as far as City fans were concerned. We had a brand new spanking his first season. Uh, the old scoreboard had been demolished, and by the time of his second season, we had a brand spanking new cantilever north stand, didn't we? That uh, uh, for that one season only would be uh, standing occupation, so he would play, he would play a, a games in front of that, of course, and it would hold uh, twenty thousand fans. 
Yeah, standing in that north stand. So that's a lot of fans in there, isn't it? 20,000. Uh, and obviously in the 71-72 season, we erected the £11,000, just a £1,000 less than uh, Freddie had cost us, uh, scoreboard in the north stand. Obviously that wonderful scoreboard that probably it worked for a bit. It didn't always work if you, like me, went to these games. But 90-foot uh, long scoreboard, yeah, was, was erected. And of course, uh, that 20,000 standing would, would the following season turn into seating for just under 8,000. So a bit of a come down, but there you go. So it was there at this time of, of what seemingly was a, a good time for City. But as I say, things were brewing underneath the surface that uh, wouldn't go so well. But in the 72 73 season, he made just four appearances uh, to a sub and uh, didn't manage to add to his goal tally for City. So despite only 35 appearances for City, it's fair to say that during his relatively brief stay, he very he didn't let City down. He, you know, he did the job that Mercer and Arsenal have asked of him. Uh, his first game, of course, he got more games due to the bit of an injury crisis. And, of course, he came very close to lifting uh, a, a European title with us, didn't he? A cup, another Cup Winners' Cup, just, just a game away, if you think about it, of getting a chance to play in that or at least be part of the team that won the Cup Winners' Cup that season. So I think he was an integral part of the squad, certainly for that competition as well. And in his second season, even more importantly, I mean, he didn't appear in the first team until after the new year, where he, he featured in six games between uh, the end of January and uh, early March. And in those six games, City won four, drew one and lost one. So it was, a, it was a good little run for City. And perhaps his last appearance that season, was probably the most important. It was a 2-1 win at Goodison Park on the 11th of March. Uh, he scored a goal wearing the number five shirt. Yeah, he played number five that day for City. Uh, the other was actually an own goal uh, by Everton's Tommy Wright, if you remember Everton's Tommy Wright. But uh, what this did, this, this win at Everton at Goodison Park cemented top spot for City. Yeah, with only nine games left of the season. Of course, that that sort of made sure we were top of top of the league. Do all right. Uh, I think Derby had a couple of games in hand, but we were still top of the league and looking really good. Uh, and it turned out to be, of course, his last goal for City. That had got a very very important goal. He was actually subbed through injury that game, so I'm not too sure how bad the injury was. Uh, but uh, he certainly wouldn't play again that season, unfortunately. And with the arrival then and the playing of a certain Rodney Marsh in the very next game. Uh, City would eventually, sadly, even though we're four points clear when Freddie Hill's goal uh, took us to, to the top of the league or kept us top of the league, uh, we would sad, sadly finish fourth in what looked like looked at the time of Freddie's goal to be a one-horse race. So we actually had a city, typical City, we could only finish fourth in a one or in uh, fourth in a one-horse race, but that's, that's how City was at the time. Uh, like City themselves, of course, his last season, his 72-73 season, things never really got going. He had an early injury and he struggled a little bit and he never really nailed down a place under Alisson who's now uh, now the manager with Mercer moving upstairs. But uh, yeah, he's professionally left City. That was his last season at City. He left, he left City, but his, his professional days weren't quite finished. He'd moved to Peterborough United and then also he had some time at Cork Hibernians, uh, Droylsden. He played for Droylsden and Radcliffe Borough. So he stayed over in Lancashire, of course. Indeed, his 75 appearances uh, with the posh Peterborough would be worthy enough for him and his and the team to be included in the Peterborough Hall of Fame. A, a fitting accolade in the twilight of his career, of course. He'd, he'd actually missed out on the Bolton FA Cup final against United when he first joined Bolton, when he beat United in the FA Cup, uh, obviously. A sad time in nine, around 1958, but he was too young. He didn't see, he didn't actually feature so obviously uh, to actually help Peter to a fourth division title, which is what he did in his time there. Was a nice addition, of course, to this legend status he still had at Bolton Wanderers. And I think I, I like to think he was appreciated by the fans at uh, Main Road as well during his brief time at our club. I mean, it's fair to say. Uh, I don't think he would have let us down. He contributed as and when he was asked to and obviously did his job of helping out perhaps the young reserves, which is what he was brought in to do with his experience, of course. Uh, and of course, so close, so close to European glory, but say, perhaps he did have, perhaps he did pick up that cup with his cup. It's nice, it's nice to think that, isn't it? It's nice, nice to think as a fan. I mean, that'd be amazing. It'd be amazing to do something like that. And it would be nice that he actually had the chance to do that if you look at that team image, of course. 
His appearances for City made 35-7 a sub and scored the three goals, so it wasn't too bad. Two against Everton and one against United. We always, we always love our players to score a goal at Old Trafford, don't we? But uh, there you go. I mean, personally, yeah, I mean, I was obviously from 70 to 73, I was attending most of the main road games, so I would have been able to see most of his game. Uh, my memories are very sketchy, of course, about anything specific about uh, Freddie. Uh, but a couple of other City fans have commented on Twitter that uh, he, he remember he could pick out a good pass, uh, which uh, is OK, but... Uh, and it was a decent dribbler. Well, we've heard that, haven't we? Obviously, from no, no no greater man than Alf Ramsey didn't fancy him because he was a dribbler. He didn't want him to play for England. So uh, someone actually said he could have. He appeared to go past players in slow motion. I think that's a nice nice thing to say about his footballing prowess, if you like. But anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope you help me like this small little tribute uh, to Fred or Freddie Hill or Frederick Hill, for to use his Sunday name, Freddie Hill. 17th of January 1940 to the 1st of October 2021. Died 81. Uh, rest in peace, mate. Stay safe, blues.